Um, my name is uh, Dr. Gichuru Philip Karanja. I'm currently a lecturer at um, Aston Medical School as a lecturer in uh, psychometrics and uh, uh, statistics. Um, uh, Dr. Gichuru, thank, thank you for uh, giving us the privilege uh, to share your success story. Um, I would like us to start um, right from where the success story started. Um, so I would like you to capture your journey, uh -huh. um, perhaps right from childhood uh, to your current uh, position as lecturer at the, uh, at the Aston Medical School. So literally start from the beginning. As, 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 far, as, as far as you would want to, uh, to go. Okay. Um, so um, I was born in um, Nairobi, Kenya. I grew up in a small, um, what do I call it? I think it, I think it qualifies to be a semi-village place in Kabete, specifically called Uthiru. Then it was very, yeah, uh, very, very semi-village. So uh, growing up, I had the best of both worlds. So went to a typical uh, city council school and then um, and then grew up uh, you know in a village setting where everyone knew everybody um, in a farm so there were cows uh, cutting nepia grass I have very scary stories about uh, uh, nepia grass yeah that's for another day climbing trees and you know so forth catching tadpoles thinking they were fish um, and so forth then just like every other person, um, yeah, you work hard and um, you go to um, a good uh, secondary school. And then from there again, I mean, uh, things are still constant. So you qualify to university. Now there are um, sort of um, certain realities start uh, downing on you. I remember, I remember in my year, uh, previously, for you, whatever you select to go to university, it was uh, cluster oriented. So either you are art, you're heavily based on the arts, or you're heavily based on on the sciences. But then, uh, for a year, for the first time, they introduced something called some weighted average, where even if your first choice, for example, was law, so you're maybe focusing more on the arts and the languages when they do the weighted thing, um, you can't make it, yeah? So unfortunately you have to um, make uh, other choices. So that happened to me. Um, and yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember really reflecting and um, yeah, getting a lot of support uh, from my old man and, and, uh, and mom in terms of uh, making a different choice. So anyway, I set on um, um, statistics. Uh, then they were offering a statistical course where it's a Bachelor of Science where you don't, unlike before, you don't have to, to, ma to major from your third year. You can begin from statistics from the, from the get-go, given that you have the grades in maths and physics and, and so forth. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, you do that uh, and then you graduate and then you have the usual expectations. Then they don't pan out. Um, again, a bit of uh, willowing. Then um, I was lucky you get exposed. You get, um, I remember I did a few stints in um, maybe Stedman Research Services. I don't know what it's called now or interactions with doctors. And then you sort of realize you have a gap in terms of uh, meeting the expectations and the way we were trained then at, uh, at the university. So you figure probably you need, um, you need a postgraduate uh, degree to, to, to hone your skills further. So again, the usual challenge of looking for a postgraduate opportunity and hopefully one that is funded. Um, yeah. Then long story short, I uh, found myself in, uh, in Belgium, in a university called Hasselt University. 
then I did two MSc programs there. The first one was applied. So really building on your undergraduate knowledge, but really applied. So now you're really using real life uh, data sets and uh, being able to, uh, to analyze and report that and present that um, you know, via statistical software. Then for the second year, if you're up for it, uh, you can specialize in biostatistics. So I took that, given that I was from Kenya, and then the whole idea was to go and 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 come back, and 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 be a superstar statistician in in malaria or HIV or or oncology. Then, um, so I did that, um, but then again, uh, life throws you a different curveball, and um, probably. The higher you go, the more you realize you don't know uh, things. And then you think, um, I might as well go all the way. So you try to find for the next opportunity. However, for me, I didn't want to do the, the sort of boutique, uh, boutique PhDs that were on offer. So I wanted, my mind was always, you know, go back, go back to Kenya. So then I was looking for something um, relevant in a Kenyan context, given the, the, the disease or um, the, the mortality and morbidity the situation we had uh, then. Um, so um, looked for array positions. So that was another way. That was another way to look for um, a PhD that you want to do. So you, you get into a research group and from there you meet people. So you meet a potential supervisor. Uh, probably they have a data set that you can take further. So my first stint as a research, um, as a research associate was at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. So I really enjoyed that. My first project was on vaccination and trying to address where there's disparity in reported uh, vaccination estimates. Um, learned a lot, I had a very good um, line manager uh, come professor who we're still in contact today. Then my next gig was in, um, uh, was in Oxford, uh, a research group called Center for Statistics in Medicine. Um, yeah, this one, um, this one I also really enjoyed and it was, you know, a different learning opportunity since this one was a dedicated uh, clinical trials unit. So everything was formalized from the data and, and, and the reporting and presenting. Then in Oxford, this, um, they have so many hospitals and their researchers have sort of matured. Yeah, so you get challenged more and then you grow you grew as a medical statistician. Yeah, but now sort of um, years are catching up and you're sort of starting to give up. Uh, you know, you can't find this PhD that you're looking for. Uh, but then I think just when I was about to give up, then, um, and again, via the networks. So I think the methodology works. It's just that, it's just that probably it takes a longer time. Uh, remember in the UK, the boutique uh, PhDs that advertise have the have the clause of you have to be you have to be a home you have to be a home student, which then um, I could you know that automatically um, writes me off. But then there are other the other pathways that you can you can pursue via, and you only get to know them via networks. So unfortunately, even if we had Google then you don't know what to look for, but they are there, yeah. And so I applied for it again, it was uh, on a competitive basis and um, 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 I got it. So dropped everything, left the, left the uh, Oxford um, position. Yeah, I remember a few people telling me I'm crazy, but you know, that's what, um, that's what I wanted. Uh, then off off to Lancaster, and now you change you change your work permit to a student visa. Uh, Lancaster was um, was a lot of fun, a lot of a lot of uh, learning. 
Um, so my PhD was on child development. Uh, to summarize it, it's basically um, as your child grows, there are certain physical milestones that you're supposed to see as they're growing. So for physical growth, these have really been defined and they've been charted. So you will take your son or daughter for vaccination and then they'll measure the weight and height and get something called a Z-score. Then they tell you, okay, umefanya uh, vizuri mama, you know, um, your, your, your son or daughter is, is okay. If there's anything wrong, maybe they're malnourished or, or something, then they'll tell you. But now um, there, there were other milestones latent that you can't see. So basically language skills, social skills, language, things they call gross motor. Like, like you know, a baby, when they're young, they usually just creep something. But then over time, they should start refining and being able to pick, you know, Chile on the ground and and so forth. So this hadn't been charted um, nicely. So basically, that what that's what my uh, project was about. Um, so I enjoyed a lot. Um, I thought I thought children were simple, and now I stand corrected. Um, they're very complicated. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I learned a lot. I traveled various conferences. I also did a stint at the Library of Congress. Uh, for about six months. Then, um, yeah, going to America was also eye-opening, uh, which was during uh, Barack Obama's um, second term, yeah? So, you know, I also saw, um, you know, certain realities of the world. Then, uh, yeah, finished, uh, finished my PhD and then, um, from then on, I've basically um, just progressed in different institutions. So um, after, uh, after Lancaster, I've spent some time in UCLan in Preston. Then, then Edge Hill, it's a uni new university. Uh, and then now to Aston. And then I think the transition between um, uh, UCLan, Edge Hill, is how I honestly sort of realized realized that you know normally you do your PhD and you know you you just keep it in in your library, um, but then I think over the past couple of years I've really uh, thought about how I can align my PhD work to what I do. So basically now for Aston, um, I quality assure their their exam the exams. What does that mean? It means um, I'm just, um, I'm supposed to, um, um, to make sure that, um, that, they're, that, that, that they're testing what has been taught. Yeah, that the, that the pass mark has been set at the right level given the year of, of that they're examining or, 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 or the level. And then also, you, you, you know, um, sometimes we don't think about it, but exams um, can be biased, um, especially now in medicine, for example, if it's a diagnosis question, um, some of the pros that you're given that the patient gave um, may, be, may be culturally driven. So, if, if you really you don't understand that language, you're not gonna get that question um, correct. So just making sure those things. So at the backdrop of my my um, uh, my qualification, so there are certain um, statistical indices and and calculations and models that you can do to give the reassurance that the exam was fine, and so the board can release the exams and tell those people who've progressed the good news and if at all there's anyone who's failed and yeah. So uh, I think that um, that summarizes my journey end to end to where I am right now. Yeah, um, Dr. Gishuru, I mean, that's uh, a fantastic success uh, story mm -hmm. or rather success journey. Yeah. Uh, and of course, very eloquently, uh, narrated mm -hmm. um i i want to kind of try to understand what drove you 
Um, so are there people, perhaps people, events or things that kind of had an influence on the trajectory that you took? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd also would like to know um, what motivated you as you worked your way to the top? Uh, well, so people and events. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, I would start yeah, thinking about my parents. My parents were very, um, very particular about um, yeah, going to school. Yeah, you can't miss school. Um, you can't miss a day in school. Um, no matter what, well, unless unless you're unwell, then that gets uh, addressed. So first, what uh, first people come to mind um, are my parents, then then teachers, yeah. Then I was raised Catholic, so also you drew a lot of um, um, direction uh, from that. Then. Um, um, to be uh, to be very honest, um, I think I think at the time growing up, you know, late eighties, early nineties, um, the promise was the higher you go, the cooler it becomes. The cooler meaning the world will get out of your way, yeah, so to speak, or or rather, now you'll finally get the things you wanted, whatever whatever they they were. So uh, actually, no. That that doesn't happen, um, but it's not all. It's not all gloom. Um, you get better. You get better at dealing with challenges. So I think, I think the the growing up or 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 the progress is about preparing you for 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 the reality, which is which is which is tough. And then by the time you've reached that stage, you know you're able to cope with everything, and it it doesn't get to. Um, to your to your head um i can tell you you know so many stories that um some of them i'm still uh trying to to figure out um uh, by by think what really uh, motivated me uh probably inadvertently is when i was very young i remember just choosing people that you want to become whoever they were, yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, um, and basically working, you know, they become, they become my heroes, yeah? So I remember one, I remember one, um, and probably I'll get laughed at because of this. So growing up, I remember I used to wake up very early. So since, since, um, when I better, I have to go to, to school, which is uh, what, uh, call it 20 kilometers. Then my dad has to cross over to the other side of town to go to, to, go to work, right? So you have to wake up early to beat, to beat the, the, the traffic. Mm -hmm. So at a very particular corner, there's this, this gentleman who we always meet. I never clearly saw his face since it was around 6 15 6 30 that's the time you leave yeah then you know growing up yeah i want to be that guy where could he be coming from at this at this hour walking walking the wrong way so uh, but i later came to learn that um, he was a watchman so he's going home yeah so <laughs> so i got ridiculed about that but you know he was he was my hero so yeah the day was always good whenever i saw him if I didn't see him, it meant, yeah, I wondered about that. Um, if I didn't see him, probably it meant we were late that day, yeah? So anyway, my point is, you know, choosing certain heroes. And then I think um, also at that time, yeah, President Moy was also some kind of hero to me, yeah? I had, I remember, I remember having a, a pipe with a potato that I always needed to replace every time since it will get loose. So I always admired, you know, when he would the either either more day or whatever, when the jets pass and then he, you know, lifts, lifts it up, you know, and he's the only one who is allowed to do that. Yeah. Then 
I think I think inadvertently you sort of make a plan. Fine, you never put it down, but you make a plan how to how can I be um, that person. Um, and then yeah, and then with time you 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 identify other people, and now you become you know more specific. So through my undergraduate, you know the professors. Uh, my postgraduate, you identify you identify people that you'd like uh, to become. Um, you find out how they became um, like that, uh, but also you push yourself further. You want to become them in record time. Yeah, so um, I think I'm kind of now on the wrong side of that since now my hairline is 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 moving faster than 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 I would like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, various other stories. There's also one that um, I'm kind of still struggling in terms of um, being being able to, you know, survive life in general, yeah. Yeah, I remember, I think we're in standard five or six, um, the teacher says, oh, the, the maths teacher is not coming, so, you can have a free period and those who know they are good can go to the field and and play football or something i me and a few others did not did not leave the class we stayed anyway that, that wasn't addressed or we weren't asked why we didn't leave or anything um but later now grown up i really struggle with why 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 i why I did that. Anyway, um, I've, un I've unpacked it and now I understand. Yeah, so, um, so another motivation is really um, um, understanding yourself and, you know, and re realities. Another motivation I draw on is, I can call it a privilege of, 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 of being able to and this was especially during my PhD, being able to see Kenya from outside, what people say about Kenya, the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. And then also in a way you're able to see yourself from outside since now I have, um, you know, my friends or people that I try to motivate who really are sort of following the same path. And then, yeah. Um, so I, I enjoy that a lot and and it's, it's, it's a catalyst. Um, uh, for me, yeah. Um, Dr. Gishoro, um, with reference to your own, to your own uh, journey, mm -hmm. um, what would you say are the keys to success? Um, and also, um, I'm thinking of perhaps someone who ha who who would get inspired by your story and who would want to work their way to your level? Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of advice and tips would you give such a person? Um, well, um, we are all from different backgrounds, cultures and, and, and societies. So uh, for me, it's really how you, how you manage. Life will inevitably throw you cup balls and challenges. So it's about um how you how you maneuver one thing i would say is um yeah respect who you are you know and where you came from um put another way is run your race yeah it's 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 um many times you catch yourself um you know how come they're being able to progress faster and i'm still here yeah, but you know, we're all um, different um, and no one is born wise. We, we are all trying to discover uh, the way, the way, um, the way forward. But one thing you should constantly do if, if you choose the academia trajectory for whatever reason is learn the tools of the trade. Yeah, yeah. since no one, all this information is not in, in, in one place. So, um, to try and specifically answer the question, how do you specifically um, learn the tools of the trade? Of course, one, uh, know the qualifications needed. 
uh, get the experience uh, required, um, that should be easy. But then start uh, start unpacking and knowing the various procedures of HR and how promotions work. Yeah, then how you how you supposed to uh, uh, be able to get all this information? Learn how to fit in without losing yourself. And then I'm talking from the point of view where you are you're away from home. So if you're at home, fitting in is easy. Yeah. But if you're away from home in whichever in whichever country or background, learn how to fit in, but without uh, um, um, losing losing yourself, so that you're able to to make friends. And from friends, this is where you'll be able to de derive the, the information, advice, bouncing off um, ideas. This is how you get the mentors, yeah? In a really, yeah, I think the best, the best advice I've got has usually been in a very informal setting, not, not, not the usual mentorship uh, things we have. Uh, in universities that you designated somebody and you talk to them, um, no. So, um, yeah, that's what I would say are the are the are the key things. Then, as you mature, um, you know, choosing your battles uh, 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 properly, remembering your bottom line, yeah. Um, yeah, know when to push back and when not to. Yeah, there are things, there are things that really are not worth your punt. You know, so you have a bottom line. You came here to achieve something, or you want to achieve something. Yeah, and if something is really gonna alienate you or is really a waste of your time, um, mm. uh, just leave it alone. Yeah, yeah um, Doctor Gishiro, of. Um... I've really enjoyed listening to your, <clears throat> of course, absolutely inspirational story. Um, and thank you for capturing it in um, uh, what I would say, excellent detail. Um, so I would like to, to wish you uh, success in the mm -hmm. next steps of your career. Yeah. Uh, and once again, thank you very much for, for agreeing to share, <clears throat> to share your experiences your wisdom, your success story with us. Thank you. All right. Thank you too. Thanks, Jim. Thanks.